Okay guys, so I might look a little funny right now, but um, I'm actually underneath a canoe trailer uh, getting ready to repack some bearings. And I thought, hey, bearings, trailer bearings, same as car bearings, same as anything with bearings. So I'm going to show you a couple of simple tricks to make it real easy to repack a set of bearings. And it doesn't matter what they're on. The repackable bearings this is kind of the same general concept of what you guys are going to do and how you're going to do it okay clean off the grease here and taking the grease buddy off some some bearings have a grease buddy for wheel bearings uh, most car bearings have a cap that goes over here all basically the same basic set of dikes is all you need to pull the cotter pin just kind of bend it out of the way and pull the cotter pin out. That is the easiest way to get it out. Then you grab your ever pair of channel lock pliers and pull that out. It shouldn't be that tight. Okay. Now if it's really tight, you probably have other issues. Now, grab your outer bearing out. I like to wipe it down a little bit. Kind of look at it. Get some of the grease off. Throw it over there in my magnetic tray. Now here is the, key, the secret. This saves you so much time getting that inner bearing off or out. Put your nut back in, pull this until you can feel it, the inner bearing, rest on that nut, and then yank. Now you have your inner bearing, your grease seal, and everything's right there. That saves you a ton ton of time trying to figure out how to pull that inner seal off and out without damaging the bearing and most of the time without damaging the seal. Now you have your inner bearing out. and your outer bearing out. And your grease seal's right here. No major damage. Gentlemen, so this is the bearing off, and it's pretty dirty and disgusting. What I'm gonna show you is what you're looking for to decide what you need. And it's gonna be kinda hard to see. But you see those spots in there? That's sculling, that's bad. That's a problem, guys. That means that these bearings are shelled. See that, where it's dark spots? You don't bother repacking these. These are all getting replaced, and every bearing has a number on it. You just have to look for it. It's on the edge. Um, if it's something you can't just find, you know, if you don't know the exact everything, go by this number. Uh, same with grease seals. Since I'm going to put new new bearings on here, I will probably put a new grease seals in here. But this seal actually doesn't look too bad. If I was just repacking it, I could uh, probably reuse it. But see how it's got a number on there? That's what you're looking for, guys. Okay, guys. So I got the bearings all pulled apart and inspected. Um, I wiped them down. They look a little less, a little cleaner, and you're probably not gonna be able to see this. I don't know if you can see it very well, but uh, these have some serious galling on it. So they're gonna have to be replaced. Well, when you replace a bearing, you replace the race also. Um, it's just something you wanna do. It's kinda like um, 
replacing bearings without replacing races. It's kind of like taking a shower and putting on your old underwear, man. It's a bad idea. Uh, doesn't work, causes issues, the whole nine yards. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to replace the races really quick and easy. Well, maybe not real easy, but I'll show you how to do it, okay? Okay. So what you're gonna need is you're gonna need a hammer, some sort of uh, straight punch, chisel, whatever. And what you're gonna do is, if you can look in there, it's gonna be hard to see. You can see this is the race here. And there's another one right here. Now there's a lip right here that you can feel once you get all the grease cleaned out. You're gonna to wanna to punch right on there. It'll give you kind of a rundown. It's not as, you can't get a good camera angle of it, but I'll show you kind of what you do. So you wanna get your punch right on the edge of that and just start pounding. You're gonna to have to find just the right angle that you can hold it at. Kind of rotate it around. Sorry about the camera moving around, guys. And you just kind of rotate it around and punch it. What you're looking for is to kind of drive this whole thing out. Once you get it kind of moving, you, it'll it'll go easier. You want to be careful not to tip, tilt it too bad because you'll get it stuck in there. But, so you can you can see how it's coming out. It's just kind of a you know see how there's space there now. Just keep punching it. And the farther you get it out, the easier it is to drive out. Oh, these are always fun. Now, once you get about to that point, sometimes you have to uh, tip it up. So you can drive it out the rest of the way. Just because, you know, once you get to a certain point, it needs to come, needs to be higher up. If you have anything round around tubing to put around there it makes it easier but uh, not everybody has that and I don't have it right now See how this is starting to come out. And there she goes. So there's your race. It's the old race. You can kind of see you see all that. That's pitting. That's why we replace the races with the bearings, guys. So I'll get the other race out, and I will show you how to get the new ones in. Okay, gentlemen. So to put in your new race, here's your new race. I like to use a bearing race installing tool. Makes it real easy. Just kind of tap it on the with a hammer, drive it in. Now. If you don't want to buy a set of these, although Harbor Freight sells them for like 30 bucks, um, you can use the old race 
that you punched out, turn it upside down, and hammer it in that way. I have found though that if you take a cutoff wheel and cut all the way through it on one side, it makes it getting it back out after you've done that a lot easier. Because if you just drive it in with this race the way it is, sometimes it won't come back out because you know, same size as the new one. So if you cut it a little bit, it'll make it, it'll be able to squish a little bit and you can get it out. But since I have this installer tool, we'll go ahead and use that. Now, you're gonna have to feel for it because sometimes they'll go in crooked. And you're gonna have to be careful. The last thing you want to do is put the start driving it in crooked because the more you get it off, the harder it is to straighten it out. So the general idea is you just keep pounding it in until it won't go anymore. Um, I'm not going to watch you let you guys watch me hammer for a minute or two and then flip it over and do the other side, but you get the general idea. You just pound it in, making sure that you keep it as flush and straight as possible, and then that's all there is to it. Then you get to repack the bearings. That's the fun part. Now the fun begins where you uh, repack your bearings. Now you'll notice I got gloves on because this is messy. You can buy a bearing repacker, but it's just as easy to do it by hand um, and cheaper. So what you want to do is you want to get the bigger, thicker end. Get a big glob of grease in your hand and go like this. You want to just keep pushing grease in there. You see, you can kind of see where the grease starts coming through. Go like that until the grease starts coming through. Rotate. Grease back in there. Just keep going around until you get grease all the way through. Now, you can see why I'm wearing gloves. You don't have to, but... I like to save the amount of soap it takes to wash my hands. And this is a very messy job. So, since I have gloves, it's just easier to put them on and pack the bearings. Now, if you had old bearings, this would be the same thing you'd do with old bearings. You repack new bearings, old bearings, doesn't matter. Same way. And just keep going around until you know for a fact you've got all the grease through there. Okay. So now, once you got grease all the way through there, you go ahead, put all that extra grease right in there. Stuff that sucker back down in there. And since this is the back side, you can put your grease seal on. I'll show you that. Now, if you wanted to pull your gloves off, pull this side. Pull this side. No major grease mess. So, the grease seal. Stick that on top. Now, use the standard bearing 
uh, driver, but get one size bigger and flip it upside down. Do the same thing. And you just drive it till it's flush. That easy. Okay guys, so here's the last part of repacking these bearings. And so it's basically putting the whole thing back together. Now we got the bearing back here with the seal. We got the front bearing on. I got a ton of grease in here. If you couldn't notice. But that's okay. You want to have a lot of grease. You want to have this thing packed full of grease. Stick your washer on here. Stick your nut on here. Now it's good if you pay attention to where your cotter pin hole is before you start. And of course where your new cotter pins are. I'm going to thread that on there. Now, you can use just about anything. I use a pair of channel locks. Um, you can grab the right wrench if you want to, but I found that channel locks are fast, easy, and everybody's got a pair. Now, with a new bearing, what you want to do is you want to rotate it and tighten it down until it really doesn't move. And then you want to back it all the way off. Till it's not touching and you want to go f basically finger tight um, sometimes you have to go a little bit tighter to get it to line up sometimes you don't but you want to get it line up with your cotter pin hole just like that grab your pair of dykes bend your pin all the way around so it's not going to come off Grab your grease buddy or your grease cap or whatever you want and put this grease back on in here. We'll grab our grease cap. Now, since this is a trailer, we'll put this bearing buddy in here. But if you had a uh, car you do you just put your grease cap back on gently tap it in
make sure it's completely sealed. Put your springy back, spring guy back in there. And then go ahead and put your C clamp back your uh, clamp back in. Now I use I've got the proper tools but I've seen people do all sorts of weird things to get these things to go in. Um, seen people take a pair of needle nose pliers and file them down. I wouldn't recommend it unless you don't like your needle nose pliers. But notice how it fits right in there. Your spring's all in there. And voila, you're done. Okay guys, so that's all there is to repacking a set of bearings. Um, doesn't matter if it's front wheel drive car with rotors, or trailer like this canoe trailer or pretty much any repackable bearing it's that simple you pull the old old one off you pull everything off you clean them up get as much grease as you can out of there repack them either by hand or if you really want to go buy a pairing repacker it saves the mess and it saves you on grease but for 30 40 dollars you can do it by hand um, if you have gloves, I recommend them seriously. My hands are still greasy and disgusting, but they are not fully red right now. Uh, that being said, expect to get dirty and greasy doing this. When you put them back on, a lot of people think you need to torque that nut down. There's a torque spec. You need to tighten it all the way. Anything like that. No. Bear, um, bearings need just a smidgen of preload on them and that's it so you want to tighten that nut down to just a hair past finger tight and then drop the cotter can pin in um, I I tighten it all the way down because these are new bearings and you want to make sure they get seated in there right um, if you're reusing your bearings you don't have to tighten them all the way down tighten it all the way to the finger go basically one one piece over one hole over on the castle nut, drop your pin in, you're done. No tighter than that, no looser than that. Uh, but you want to make sure it's finger tight. I mean, minimum of finger tight. Preferably just a hair preload. Past that, you're good to go. It's a simple, easy job. People pay a lot of money to have a shop do it. Shops love to do it because they don't care about getting greasy. They have bearing repackers and all that stuff I just did, including putting the nut back on there to pull your inner seal off. Most mechanics know this. So have fun guys, enjoy. Check out the blog over at myknowledgeguy.com and uh, hope this helped.